Good afternoon and welcome to today's episode of Challenges in the Street. Uh, we're focusing on TRT operations uh, for the company officer, right? First in company officers and uh, their role in a TRT event. As always, if you're a certified chief officer and wish to receive COPDI credit, make sure that you log in now with your last name or your name and your fire department ID and of course do the same at the end of the program as well. Uh, as always, if you're watching this as a group at a station, we would like to know uh, the station number and how many people are watching. That just helps us with our data tracking and views for the day. So we're uh, excited to be back at the Academy again. Uh, we've been following uh, some of the specialty team stuff, and ironically, we've had some specialty team events, and uh, this is going to marry up kind of the same. Uh, so today we're talking about TRT and their operations in the county. Uh, there aren't, aren't many folks left, uh, but if we think way back to some of the TRT and when it got started, it actually was the Chief Tommy Carr, Sergeant Carr at the time, the old Rockville cave-in team, right? So that was the late uh, middle to late 1980s. A uh, few people around that were part of that. And really from that group grew a lot of stuff uh, of which today is our TRT folks. So TRT today is a highly technical operation, right? <clears throat> they can do uh, basic stuff all the way up to high tech stuff. They respond on all different type of calls. We hear them on the radio, we hear them responding. You see rosters with their folks names on there and our goal today is to talk more about that and how to interact uh, as the company officer. A couple other notes I got here and you would have saw the lead in screen. We do have uh, a special COPDI for chief officers, although everybody is welcome to watch that. And that's gonna be the incident commanders from the Twinbrook water rescues and the Laytonsville propane explosion and the Glen Mill Road house fire during the storm that started off as a automatic fire alarm. And that's slated for November 10th uh, at 1300 hours. That's gonna be a three hour event. Each hour is a new incident. And you're gonna hear from those incident commanders that are so excited about that. And then uh, later on in the month, uh, November 15th, you saw we have a boss talk, which is the first arriving company officers at the propane explosion. Hang in to the end, there'll be some more stuff about upcoming events and so forth. But uh, that's it for me. Make sure you signed in. If you're watching from a station, do the same thing. If you've got questions as uh, this goes on, you can chat on the YouTube. I'll pop them up or you can send me an email. I'm monitoring the email as well. Any further ado, I'm turning it over to uh, Captain John Emmons, uh, 31 on the A shift, and he's gonna talk to us about your role in TRT operations in Montgomery County. Captain Emmons. Thank you, Chief. All right, so Chief Davis touched on uh, a little bit of the history of the technical rescue team. Um, goes way back to uh, when Chief Tom Carr was here. It was a clap rescue team. Um, it then got designated as one of the 25 FEMA teams uh, that was uh, responsible for national and uh, local response. <clears throat> they soon realized that that wasn't a good practice. Uh, the units were kept in the building up behind Station 31, so if a local call came out, they had to go there, get the equipment ready to go, and it was a delay in time. So they um, decided that the best thing to do was to separate, and uh, that's where we are today. The uh, Montgomery County Technical Rescue Team handles all local calls, and uh, the FEMA team or Maryland Task Force One is the national response team. All right, so uh, we're made up of uh, about 120 people. Uh, the majority of the personnel are at stations 31, 29, and 25. Uh, we have uh, mandatory staffing of four members and one technical rescue officer at each one of those stations. So there's 10 of us on duty 24 hours a day. Uh, when you become a member of the technical rescue team, we go through special training. They're all technician level rescue classes. So we train in rope, trench, confined space, and structural collapse. Um, as well as those classes, we also have uh, training uh, every month. There are six days designated, two days per shift. Uh, because of the number of members, we have to split it up over two days. Um, we have a site here at the Academy. It's uh, up on your screen right now. That's our spec ops site. As you can see the uh, C containers. We use those for uh, 
you know, we can use those for rope, we can uh, confine space, and so forth. So other than uh, those capabilities we deal with, um, we, we have special equipment that we can handle a variety of issues. Um, rescue calls that are more complex, such as a dog in a well, we can handle that you know, based on our training and our equipment. Uh, also, calls outside the capability with regards to our equipment or knowledge, we can deal with them as well. Um, atypical auto accidents, um, such, such as uh, you know, heavy machinery or buses or uh, dump trucks. So what we have here, uh, we, have, we have three units. We have Tech Rescue 700, 700 Bravo, we have a Spec Ops trailer. And uh, as you can see, we have the behind me here. Um, Tech Rescue 700 is uh, primarily set up to handle all four types of calls that we could run. Uh, there's equipment on there for uh, confined space, rope, trench, and uh, structure collapse. The uh, Bravo unit, which is the vehicle in the center, um, that also can handle um, the different tech rescue calls. It does not have confined space equipment on it. We, that's primarily on the first unit. And then our last unit, which is the Spec Ops trailer, that is uh, primarily trench equipment. So if you uh, call us, we decide which units we need to bring to handle that call. Uh, all those units are um, housed at Station 31. Uh, it is in our future plans to hopefully strategically place one of those units at a different firehouse in the county. So with a, when it comes to uh, the different responses, we can either, there's a tech rescue investigative response where you will get one unit uh, with a TRTO. Um, and we will come to see if we need uh, the full team or if we can just handle it with a couple people. We, the, the tech rescue guys, we can assist, uh, say, the engine officer to hopefully mitigate the issue. If it's uh, more complex than that, then we can bring you know, the rest of the team, which is a, a full response in which all the units will respond. Also, you'll get uh, the squad out of Station 29. That's tagged on to um, the response as well. Those guys bring the squad. And that unit helps um, supplement what we have in our tech rescue cache. So as I said, uh, there's, a, there's a tech rescue officer um, on duty at station 29 and you also have one at station 31 and uh, what you can do is uh, contact either one of those guys like if you need to consult with them if you have something unusual you're just not feeling real comfortable with you can give them guys a call you can uh, maybe take pictures with your Zello phone and send them pictures and and talk to them and if obviously if you need them um, you guys we would be glad to come and help um, some calls that uh, you may want to consult with or like trees on a structure or cars into a structure. Um, we can certainly provide help with those kind of calls. Um, our goal is to quickly mitigate the call um, as safely and as simple as possible. But if it's not a simple, uh, a simple call, if we can't solve it you know, easily, we have the knowledge and equipment to take it to a more technical level and that may take a little more time to do such. So, you guys got that picture up? You good? So, uh, the picture you got up right there is, um, that's from Arla Street. As you can see, we have a lot of equipment out. We've got the wood package. We're getting ready to do um, some shoring. Go to the next one. So, with uh, structure collapse, uh, there's a lot of engineering involved, and uh, this is just a picture of um, this is spot shore. We, uh, we start shoring on the outside of the building as we progress in. Um, so uh, we'll go to the next picture. Here's a picture of uh, another shore that we can do on the inside. Um, and we just we use uh, an engineer that we can um, consult with and provide feedback on what type of shores, you know, with uh, the weight loads, what's above us, and what needs to, to uh, make that area safe in order to progress further in the building. Here's, uh, here's a picture of a door shore. 
that we put in. It's a three post uh, door shore. So again, um, just showing you pictures of uh, things that, you know, you, for me to say, oh, I did one post vertical or two post vertical, you may not know what that is. So um, showing you different pictures here. There's another uh, um, shoring, um, a two post on a, on a doorway. This is with uh, Paratech struts that we have on the unit. Uh, this is a picture of a raker shore, so let's pretend, say the, uh, the wall is about to collapse. We can put up a brace there to, to uh, prevent that from happening. And these are, these, uh, are pictures of training. We, uh, we alternate our training, uh, so we'll do structure collapse one month, do you know, trench, rope. We alternate through the year. That way we're touching on all the different um, disciplines that, or the the rescues that we could handle. All right, go to the next one. This, uh, just another shore that we, we can do, holds up the inside, the floor above, all the load above that. All right, so this, uh, this is a picture of uh, breaching through concrete. So if we have a structure collapse, we may have to get down through that concrete to get to a victim. Uh, this is a training exercise. And then, uh, just back in through a hole, and this is a vertical breach, I'm sorry, a horizontal breach going through concrete. Guy working there. All right, so on this one, uh, we repelled down the side of a building and breaching in through an exterior wall. So I have a, I have a participant, my mic hops. So I do have a question for you, Captain. Could you, I understand there are di different disciplines within TRT, correct? There's a rope, there's a trench, there's a collapse. Could you give me a, uh, and I get if there's a guy stuck in a trench that I'm going to need a full TRT response. Could you give me uh, some examples of, of like a rope response? I guess the only one that I can think of now was the scissor lift in Rockville that was stuck in the up position. Um, Certainly not overcomplicated, but something outside of the scope of, you know, truck 716, and I'm just throwing a unit out there. Could you give me some examples of, of times when I might call? You know, window washers. That's a good example. Um, uh, so window washer, um, you know, stuck. You know, he can't get down. He had an issue with his equipment or whatever. Um, a tower rescue. Where, um, so the tower cranes in Bethesda or downtown or, Silver Spring. Or, or an antenna, you know, where a worker went up, let's say he got too cold, his hands are too cold, he can't, you know, move his hands anymore, we may have to go get him. That's a good example of a rope call. Um, maybe somebody down at Carter Rock that's climbing, falls over, you know, we can't get to him on the ground, so we would repel down to get to them. So would we work together with the water guys to, to, to remove a patient from... Be the river? Yeah, we could. We could uh, call on them. And we've actually trained with them before where uh, you know, we'll rappel down and maybe lower the person into a boat. Maybe that's the best way to get them out of there instead of coming back up. So what, um, what would exceed my capabilities as a company? Like, hey, I trained to this level at Station 2. You know, essentially a, a three to one. Should, should I be expected to be able to do more than that sure. as a anything, regular unit? Anything more than uh, a gradual slope evac. Um, as far as rope, the tech rescue team should be there to handle that. Through a consultation or you guys need to be on site? We need to be on site. You can actually call for us, but I mean, a lot of times that'll come from the 911 dispatch. You know, window washer, you know, stuck on a rope, you're getting TRT right off the bat. Are there things that I could do as a company officer? And you may be, if you're going to talk about this later, just tell me. Yeah, can I touch on that then? Yes. Um, all right, let's hit it now. All right, so um, as a company officer, if uh, let's say you run, uh, we'll use trench for example. Um, you're the first arriving engine officer, you get on scene of a trench call. Things that you can do uh, would be to first assess the situation, um, you can see how many victims you have, um, you could put a, uh, go ahead and get a meter in the hole, get the atmosphere 
uh, atmospheric monitoring um, and start to stabilize the situation. Uh, you know, talk to witnesses how many people were in. Um, the other thing you want to do is, like with the trench, you don't want to, this goes back to our annual research, but you want to approach the trench at the narrow end of the trench, not the, not the side, the wide end, because there could be a secondary collapse of the, uh, of the dirt. Um, and then uh, <clears throat> you can control any hazards that you have. So if there's an electrical hazard, get the electric shut off, you know, lock out, tag out. If you've got the open gas lines, try to get that shut off. Um, and the same thing with confined space. Um, you know, if you run a confined space incident, first arriving unit officer, go and start monitoring, find out, you know, how many victims are in there, what the extent of their injuries are, um, isolate, deny entry. So uh, if it's a simple rescue, like in a trench or confined space, maybe the person can climb out, you can put a ladder in. You know, we, we want to do things the simplest way, but if we have to escalate, you know, to a more technical um, method of rescue, then we can do that with our equipment and our training. So. And rope would be the same way? Like, Correct. What's the longest hunk of rope you guys have? We have uh, two 600-foot ropes okay. on, our, on our tech rescues. So really any building in the county? Correct. Yep. All right, so uh, you guys got that picture? Okay. Now, may have, we may have missed this. Who determines what gets taken? Do you take everything every time? No, no we on don't. On the apparatus. So if we're, if we're going to run a, uh, a trench call, there's no, or a confined space call. You know, we don't have confined space equipment on the spec ops trailer, so we're just taking the first two trucks. But the officer at Station 31 determines that. So I would think getting the call type rate is pretty important. Correct. Right. So have you had any issues, say, right? So we've transitioned a bunch, right, in communications. Have, have you been caught where you've, it's been an incorrect call type or not so much? That doesn't happen too often. But that's one of the main reasons why we have tried to set up both trucks that they can handle uh, any type of tech rescue. The problem we have run into is over the years we've gained more equipment. We've had to expand out to three trucks, and this is the best we have right now. Gotcha. Um, so we had to move the, uh, all the equipment that's on the spec ops trailer used to be on TR 700 Bravo, but we had to move that into that trailer in order to accommodate uh, new structural collapse equipment. So pretty important for the first arriving unit to verify the call type. Yes. Got it. All right. Yep. And is that something that we would prefer to do via Zellophone or just the radio or I would say the radio. Any more questions? Nope. All right, uh, is that picture up? Good. Uh, this is just another training exercise. Uh, we rappelled down on a rope in an elevator shaft uh, and did a vertical breach through concrete to get to a victim below. So again, this is all uh, training, you know, things we train for in case we're encounter this situation in real life. Uh, poor picture, I apologize, but uh, confined space. You know, small tube we may have to go through you know, to get to a victim. Uh, this is another confined space um, facility that we have trained at in the past. You can see the tube on the ground there. All right, the picture of a trench before uh, we start training, we put down ground pads around the outside. That helps. Um, Spread the, the uh, weight, distribute the weight across the, the edge of the trench. Uh, and again, this is what something you would expect to see when we get there. This is what we're doing. All right, so this is a little tough, but uh, we've got a ladder in the hole. Uh, there's two rescuers in there. We take uh, panels and we put up against the sides of the trench and uh, put struts across the trench and pressurize them to hold the dirt back. And that gives us a, a safe area to work in. All right, next picture. All right, the uh, picture of us doing a rope train. This is a pickoffs in the high bay. One of our monthly trainings. So you ask about the simple versus technical complex rope evolutions. This is uh, just a picture of uh, some uh, anchoring that we did uh, with the rope. As you can see, it can get uh, pretty technical and complicated. 
this is us, uh, another training evolution, just a lot of rope and a lot of engineering uh, involved, you know, to make sure that we're safe. And uh, uh, another training evolution, we're doing a high line uh, from a bridge, from one bridge to another. Is lashing a worker in a basket and removing them from a roof via aerial device, is that a TRT event? So are they still teaching that in trucks class? I, I believe our, I don't know. I, I don't know I'm, the answer to that and I apologize. I'm not but sure. I believe our truck drivers are training on that evolution. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that's still um, part of the truck training, uh, truck operator. I don't think that's been removed. But that, I could consult, certainly. Correct, correct. And, and we would be glad to come and you know, assist if need be with that. Uh, picture here, this is a 560 foot high line across the quarry. This was, uh, <clears throat> this was extra training. This wasn't the entire technical rescue team, but you know, some of us will go get extra training. You know, the training never ends. You know, we're always learning something new, you know, trying to better ourselves. Uh, so this was uh, uh, an off-duty class that some of us went to. And then of course, uh, this past spring, we. We had a class in county where we did the uh, tower rescue, uh, where we, you know, lead climb up a tower. There's a, a worker stuck, he can't get down, whatever the issue may be. Uh, this uh, guy's from the team trained on how to, you know, rig him up and get him back down to the ground. Just another picture of that. All right, uh, so I'm gonna, if we can move the cameras over here, I'm just gonna show you some more of the equipment that we carry and our capabilities. Am I good? So this is, a, this is a search camera we carry on TR700. Um, this extends out to uh, about 10 or 12 feet. You know, in a, in a building collapse, we can put this camera down into void spaces there's a microphone on the end, there's a light, and uh, we can actually look for victims. Uh, we carry uh, GPS, so uh, for searches. This, uh, this is a core drill, it's an electric um, big drill, it drills a, a hole, we can put that, drill a hole in the concrete, and uh, put this camera down through that hole you know, to do uh, look in void spaces. We have, uh, uh, we carry meters on both of the units um, for uh, atmospheric monitoring. These are, uh, these are breakers. So uh, we have a hydraulic and of course, you know, back up to the backup. If the hydraulic goes down, we have electric as well. Heavy duty breakers that get through concrete. Um, in the back there, we have two different um, Paratex struts. We use those for, uh, you know, structural um, stabilization also for uh, vehicle stabilization. You know, we talked about you know, that atypical vehicle accident, uh, you know, dump truck rolled over, bus, whatever. We have a uh, little heavier duty capabilities for that. So I got a question. So okay. what about, uh, so I'm thinking back to the company officer, incident commander stuff, right? So you got to leave access for your vehicles, right? So how, obviously you like to be close. What, what's your limitations on your vehicles, right? Where are you trying to, get? so they got a working event, pick some residential area, right? Where are you trying to get to? As close as we can. So down the block, right up to the scene. Close as, hey, move close. your fire truck out of the way. Yep. What are you doing? Yep, close as, close as we can. I mean, uh, we have a, a UTV at station 31 that we could bring. We could use that to help transport equipment or personnel to the scene, but generally that doesn't happen. But if we know from the get-go that we have access issues, we can certainly bring that. So you hear on the radio the hazmat team, or at least some folks talking about a uh, staging area for the hazmat team. So I don't know that I've heard people talk about a staging area for the TRT. Maybe they do. I don't know. Do you, do you guys ask about that? Not typically. Know. Hazmat team seems to like, hey, got a staging area for us. Yeah, not typically. I mean, we're going to try to get in there close, but 
Uh, if if uh, the chief officer, the first arriving you know, engine officer designates that, you know, we, we can certainly use that. And what about using other people's power supplies? So, like, are you, are you sell, I know you're self-sufficient, but how often are you going to use a rescue squad's power supplies? Are you going to use a ladder truck? What Certainly, yeah. Them, right? That unit's closer, and we, and we need to. Uh, we can do that. We have an uh, onboard generator on TR-700 that we can use. We also have uh, two portable generators that we can bring to the scene if need be. All right. Got it. Good. Another question. Uh, this uh, this went in from the group. So uh, this is a staffing question. It says, uh, for technical events, is there a minimum staffing to engage? Uh, if you have, so if you have people with technical experience working overtime or are on the FEMA team and they have equipment on the rescue squad, how does that all work? So I, that's a little unclear, but. I'm working at company 16 and the tillerman says, hey, I'm a tech rescue guy, I can facilitate this pickoff. Is that something that Captain Miller allows to transpire or no? I, how do I know? So <clears throat> if it's a full team response, we generally don't have the non-consolidated units respond as well. They could, but, but not, I'm not going to turn them away. You know, if I'm at 31 and we're going on a trench call and, and you on the radio, hey, I got one TRT guy, can I help? Sure, but I wouldn't want, you know, 10 different units showing up with one guy. Um, generally, 10 tech rescue people between uh, 29 and 31, um, that's the minimum staffing for those stations. Um, is sufficient. That's the minimum. I mean, more hands, the better. Uh, we also, there are also TRT people at 25, and on a full TRT response, we're getting a support unit at 25 as well. Um, so there could be two or three guys there coming, um, depends on the shift and who's working and so forth. So, so you would end up using my unit maybe as a manpower piece possibly, or something correct. like that. Yep. Hey, haul these panels, haul this rope bag, whatever yep. the case is. Yep. Yeah, and, and that could be for the, you know, if you're on engines, you know, 702, you know, you're running that, you know, your first uh, unit on the scene you can certainly use your, your guys for that. At the technician level um, is needed to engage in the incident. So in a confined space, technician level to actually go in the hole. But you can certainly move equipment back and forth, you know, the firefighters, you know, to and from the scene. I'll probably be on the saw road, but yep. the same. Uh, same way as the trench, you know. So I want to keep going with this, right? So now this is probably more for the chief, from the chief officer's perspective, right? Uh, is I can't have a third of my units, county units tied up on a TRT call just because they all brought one person, right? So uh, I think from the chief officer's perspective, we're good to get the people there. Can you figure out how to get some units back in service, right? So if if two brought one person who happened to be an overtime guy from another shift, but he is a TRT guy, if two brought one and 16 brought the tillerman and 19 brought somebody else, now I got three rigs out of service. Can you not consolidate that, right? So I'm pretty sure somebody tries to consolidate that, but I think, so that question came from a float lieutenant, which is I think is a valuable question because that person's all over the county and in any given day could have the overtime guy who's a TRT dude ride the ambulance and now he wants to go on the TRT call. That's where I know there's no absolute written policy for everything, but a little guidance to them like, hey, here's what you should do in this situation. Yeah, we generally, the non-consolidated personnel should not respond, you know, unless we, we got a pretty good feel in the beginning that, you know, it's gonna be a big long event, let's say Arla Street, you know, yeah. that's, that's pretty in-depth and so forth. <clears throat> the TRT officer may call ECC and say, you know, have all non-consolidated personnel respond as well. You know, this is it's going to be extensive, you know, event. We're going to need all hands. And that call would come from the TR, sure, T officer, correct. The TRT officer is the uh, guy in charge of the technical rescue incident. Gotcha. Okay, good on mine.
You can talk about it. I'm good. What else you got? Huh? What else you got? No, I think I think that's that's important. It, you know, if if as an officer, this is how we sort things out. Right. I covered Come that from you, not me. I covered that. <laughs> Do you want to go into the vehicles or not? We can. No? We certainly can, yeah. Are there things in the vehicles um, that we, I, I know you went over equipment, things in the vehicles that could be of use or, hey, as a company officer, it's good to know that we have these capabilities. A tree trimmer in a tree. Is that a technical rescue event? Uh, from the rope perspective, sure. If he's up there and can't get down or whatever we could we can go get him we have equipment to do lead climbing uh you know just like going up the tower we can go up the trees and utilize equipment when we're up there to secure the guy or i mean yes yeah just be rope equipment and lower him back down okay and what are these breaching and breaking items that you laid out like what how how do they how would they work in conjunction with each other like you talked about the the concrete saw to make access point for the cameras and or microphones. Is that, I mean, is that, uh, is that something we regularly do or it would be a pretty technically, technical specific TR, full TRT call when we did that? Like the house explosion, we're gonna have a boss talk on that. Can you tell me or walk me a little bit through some of the things that the TRT di team did on that call? It was a recent call. Yep. So. Um, we would just evaluate the structure and figure out what we need to do in order to get in to get the person out. Uh, as I said, you know, we would start shoring on the exterior. Uh, we could consult with an engineer. Um, and, and, we, and we have, as a team, we have one of those? We do, we have those? access, yep. Um, she's, not on, uh, she's not on TRT, she's with FEMA, but we use her if we, if we you know, would have to. Um, and we would just make that area safe, you know, you know, with shoring before we made access because we'd be worried about a secondary collapse of that structure. So the real big thing, I guess, as a company officer is gather the best information. Do, do, you want, do I need to be somewhere else? Oh, is, is really gather as much site-specific site information as I can? Correct. And then relay that to you and allow you guys to start to make those decisions on what equipment to bring. Like, I guess one truck carries a little bit different stuff than the, the other truck, which carries a little bit different stuff than the trailer. So the better information that I can get to you, right. the more people and the more equipment to bring. Yep. And then, yeah, I mean, we're gonna get you know, that information from, from dispatch. Um, and like I said, the red, the red truck, TR-700, that's our primary truck. We're rolling with that regardless of the tech rescue incident. If it's a trench call, then we're going to bring, you know, the spec ops or trench trailer. Uh, if it's anything else, we'll bring the second truck. So we're rolling with those, you know, those two right off the bat anyway. So an event like Arliss Street was a long event, right? I mean, it, it, it took days to solve that or to sort through that. What kind of uh, uh, call-out time is that? Is that something that, you know, at midnight when, the, when the, it happens that we're thinking through this, or how does that work? So um, Tech Rescue showed up, and we, if I recall, they had operational periods. Um, so, you know, happens on, on uh, C-Shift. You know, C-Shift is there for that day, but um, we ended up um, getting support from FEMA um, and FEMA personnel to help us because of the... Uh, um, the size of that incident, but you know the on-duty crew they came in the next day and you know, they kind of they took over. So it's a TRT essentially on-duty guys and it the is. FEMA team is everybody. You can be part of TRT but not FEMA. You can be part of FEMA not TRT, or you can be on both teams. Like two separate two separate teams. FEMA is a national response team. Correct. TRT is a local team. Correct. In the county. But it, it exceeded our resources and equipment. Um, Arliss Street. Arliss Street did. So we, you know, just like mutual aid, we, you know, FEMA helped support us for that call. Um, so it was the on-duty guys, you know, showing up as well as other people, you know, that could help us with that. Okay. I have a few. 
I don't know that they're in any particular order, but uh, we'll just go through them. So let, uh, so you're a captain at 31, that's a double service house, right? So the lieutenant does not have to be TRT. He does not have to be. One, so, one of the officers need to be a TRTO. Yep, so let's talk about it. Hey, it's your shift, right? So you're working, I guess, in two days, right? We're working in two days. You're gonna be the captain, and let's say that your regular lieutenant is not there, and you got a float lieutenant who is not a TRT dude, and he's working there. So uh, what's he gonna ride, and what's your expectations of him or her in a TRT incident? It's going to depend on the rest of the staffing that's there that day. Okay. Um, let's say the other eight are all TRT, and I only got that one float lieutenant who's not TRT. We're going to take him along. Um, Why? He could be used as manpower or another resource on the scene. You know, as I stated before, you know, technician level to actually you know make entry, but you know he could always help with other stuff. Who drives all your stuff? Guys assigned to the firehouse. So do you abandon, like the Swift Water team abandons fire trucks to take Swift Water assets. Yep. Do you abandon fire trucks to take TRT assets or not? <clears throat> yeah, we abandon some of them. Uh, so TR-700, two people. TR-700 Bravo, two people. Uh, we can use the support unit. Uh, that carries four people uh, to get personnel to the scene. We may bring the ladder truck. We may bring the engine. Uh, but we would abandon units. Just, we try to get everybody there, but yep. there are primary you know, units that we need to get there, the tech rescue units. What about mutual aid calls? Meaning going out of county, how do you handle that? Um, so a good example of that is Frederick. Uh, the, uh, the collapse up there, tech, they, they called us um, to, to support them with uh, shoring up that house. Um, so that was just simply, you know, ECC dispatched us and um, we put a crew together and took the units up there to take care, you know, to help them with the shoring. Right. And th those people came from 31 one day, you know, some of the guys from 29 were up there another day. So there's like the, I, I don't know the answer, does like the duty chief authorize that or I would assume that's the answer, but I don't know. Maybe a duty chief hop up on the chat here if we know that. So uh, Spec Ops Chief. Is Spec Ops Chief authorizes yep. chief out of county people. response. Right. Uh, so this is not a always not a rapid thing. It's if of the of the five guys minimum. You said five personnel minimum. Do are they all rope people, trench people, and collapse people, or might? Is there a mismatch of those? So when you, when you uh, join Tech Rescue, you, know, you transfer to 31, 29, or 25, you have two years to get those four technician classes. Um, so there could be, of those five, of the five people assigned to 31, um, there need to be five personnel that have all four classes. All fully capable. Correct. Okay. Uh, there could be somebody there that's in training status that uh, it has the rope portion, but not correct. the class. Yeah, they quite haven't completed their classes yet, but they don't count as TRT personnel until they have all four. Okay. So, so I don't need to be worried. Come to you guys are coming to Coma Park. Of the five guys or of the guys that respond, they're going to have all those capabilities. Correct. Five from 31 and five from 29. Potentially. And you guys yep. talk amongst yourself. You would talk to the officer at 29 and 25 and say, no, 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 I, we can handle the situation with what I got. I'll go, you guys stay in service or? So it depends on the dispatch. If it's just an investigative dispatch or, you know, a TRT investigation, you're going to get one uh, TRU and one tech rescue officer. Um, that could be, that could be Captain Barcinius at station 16. He's a TRTO. Um, so maybe. And you guys would sort that out internally or correct. daily or call or. Yeah. Like if it's, if it's a, uh, you know, let's say it's down in Silver Springs somewhere. I may call him up and say, you go ahead and go, and I'll send two guys on a tech rescue, you know, just to get an evaluation. But if it's a, if it's a full-fledged TRT response, you know, you're getting the, the TRU from 31 with all TRT personnel assigned there, and also uh, TRT personnel from 29 with the rescue squad, and a 25 cents of support unit. So potentially you know, more than 10 could be coming on a full TRT response. 
Got some more. Yeah, 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 yeah. I butted in. I apologize. You did. It's all right. Uh, are all TRT officers officers? You'll yes. see where I'm going in a minute. Yep. So they are. So, because um, <clears throat> here's where I'm going, right? So, Captain Miller's working an incident, right? And somebody shows up and says, I'm a TRT officer, right? You don't even know, I mean, you know, you know, kind of knows the person, but I don't know, right? So it's not gonna be a fireman dude showing up, right? With just firefighter rank, who's the TRT officers. Cause that, that on swift water, they can, right? So there can be a master firefighter who's the swift water officer for the day. And that's perfectly fine. Just from our folks that don't encounter TRT, Battalion One, we don't encounter TRT. We don't send anybody to TRT. We don't see them much other than when there's an event. And when they do show up, then you're trying to figure out, so who do we interact with before the 31 assets get there, right? So people are just trying to sort that out. And I think it would be a similar uh, question that command officer would have. Hey, I'm in Battalion Two and I'm sitting in the command post down in Glen Echo. Well, I'll tell you where it was Lincoln Street or the dudes were electrocuted, right? So the first guy shows up, says I'm a TRT officer. I don't even know who he is. He's a lieutenant, right? I know he's a lieutenant because he got lieutenant stuff on, but I don't know him. So how do I know he's a TRT officer? I know he's not going to lie to me, but you see where I'm going. Yep, with that, yep. Right? So because we use this term officer kind of loosely, what does it mean to be the TRT officer? And when somebody says that to me or to Captain Miller. Gotcha. So uh, let's say Captain Miller uh, joins station or, you know, transfers station 31, um, joins TRT gets his four classes, he is now an officer on TRT, but he's not a TRT officer. There's a uh, extra uh, process that an officer has to go through to become a TRT officer. Um, you have to have IS 300, ICS 300, and uh, also be evaluated uh, at training on all four disciplines. So you gotta run a rope training, you gotta run a confined space, a trench, and a uh, structure collapse training and then be evaluated by the team leader um, to be checked off as a TRT officer. Once you have that designation, you then can be in charge of a tech rescue incident. So until you have that extra training and check off, you technically can't be in charge. You can't be the TRTO uh, at 31 that day, you know, kind of like hazmat is, you know, they have an HMO at seven. Um, you could be on the hazmat team, but you're as a captain, but you um, can't work at Station Seven until you're an HMO because they have that requirement. And they give you this secret handshake, also. Yep. Uh, I do have a couple more. Okay. Excuse me. Got to put my glasses on. Uh, so this is a TRT officer question. Somebody asks, do TRT officers have additional structural engineering training? That is not required. Are they uh, structural collapse specialists? I, I don't remember. Yeah, Smart, they yeah. have to go through the structure collapse. What were the four disciplines again? Structure, rope, trench, gotcha. and confined space. Right. Uh, another question says, uh, what resources remain available when Maryland Task Force One is activated for an out-of-state response? So Maryland Task Force One is the national team. Yep. Um, Do they take a fair amount of TRT folks with them or not? There could be. Um, I don't know the numbers, but uh, so for example, they're only allowed to take so many TRTOs, so many HMOs. That so way, we always have one available to us in county. A, a TRT response. Yep, yeah, they're not going to take all of uh, the local. Got they're it. not going to take all the TRT people. There, there are numbers there, and I, I and don't they got their own vehicles. They're not taking one of these to no. Louisiana or wherever to go. Correct. Gotcha. So we last month when they went, we never lost in county response capability. We did not. Correct. We did not, but we did lose some of the TRT folks because they're all those people were on both teams. Right. Yeah. Uh, here we go. I think you kind of answered it, but uh, kind of relevant to these days. Uh, is there a minimum staffing level for the county for TRT, meaning if there's not enough working, is TRT force held? Yes. 
Gotcha. And we haven't really we haven't run into that issue. Um, I mean, I, I, I guess there have been a few times where TRT personnel were force held because they needed those numbers, but we, we don't drop. You have drop, a pretty big group though, right? We don't drop below that 10. What's the total size of TRT in general, do you know? There's 120 members on the team. Gotcha. And uh, as far as TRT owes, roughly 32, 34. And we need two on duty. Uh, that was from a newly promoted captain, probably thinking about whether he joins TRT or not. <laughs> Hustling overtime. That's what he's doing. Anyway, all right, so that's it on my list for now. John, what anything, else you got? Anything else you want to? Yeah, thank you very much. And I guess the, one of the big takeaways really is, is from an outsider or outside officer or outside unit looking in, gather as much information as I can and convey it to an on-duty TRT officer, right? Correct. You know, or call for us, you know, through ECC. But, you know, my thing today was uh, to try to get that point across, you know, that uh, first arriving unit officer, you know, if you're not sure, give us a call. You know, we can console on the radio. We can send, you know, a single resource, the closest TRTO. But um, this is what we're capable of. This is what we do. And uh, we try to keep things simple. You know, you all, you know, as a first arriving unit officer can keep it simple. You know, like I said, you know, you got, you got somebody in a hole. If they can climb out, put a ladder in there and get them to climb out. Uh, but, you know, get things started before we get there. Uh, that just helps um, mitigate the incident even quicker. Certainly. Certainly. And then the other things that we were talking about beforehand, uh, things like uh, complex extrications. You right. guys... Can, can bring the knowledge and the manpower and, and even the equipment to those things, right? Yep. Don't, let's not just keep throwing rescue squads or, or something at it. We could, we could consult and, and, and bring other people in. Yep, we can help support that. Excellent. John, thank you very much for uh, coming in and, and talking a little bit about the TRT and showing us some equipment. Um, as a reminder, uh, the CCOs, go ahead and, and sign up. Don't forget to sign out. Uh, Chief Thomas will take care of all the credit uh, associated with that. Uh, in addition, if you have any ideas for these challenges in the streets or even a boss talk, you've, you've run an event uh, and you think it would make a good boss talk, either reach out to myself, reach out to Chief Davis, uh, and, and help us work through some of these things. Um, as a reminder, coming up on November 15th, which is a C-shift, uh, we will visit the, uh, a boss talk with the Laytonsville house explosion. And then in mid-December, we don't have a date nailed down yet, but mid-December, uh, we will do the telehealth and uh, alternative uh, destination uh, talk with Chief Kaufman. So until then, thank you very much for tuning in. Have a good day.